All right, so the goal for today, for this video, is to create a dish using only ingredients that I catch myself, or Jocelyn. Uh, and I just casted this one out for her, just got squid on it. Uh, we just got here and then she's gonna fish the squid and I'm gonna use a swim bait and see if we can get a fish here. And uh, we'll try some foraging as well. Maybe we might try some diving too. Uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. I have no idea what I'm gonna make in this video because we have to catch it first. And the dish is gonna be 100% made with what I catch. Let's hope I, it all goes well. Oh, snag. Oh! I'm very curious if I can get something in that little cave there. There's like that little kind of caved area. And I could just run over here real quick. Look at this. Oh, oh this is pretty cool. Wow. The sounds that this cave makes. Pretty intense. All right, let's see if there's a little, little fish in there, huh? Oh, I thought I had a hit. That's, I keep getting snagged just right there, right in front of me, thinking it's a fish. But um, there's some kelp right, right there that's kind of like flowing over, and um, and it just catches on the swim bait. So I'm just letting it sink all the way to the bottom. It takes about six to eight seconds, I think, depending on the depth, obviously. And then just reel up, up, and back down. And reel up, up, and back down. Reel up. I got one. Ooh, got a fish, got a fish. What is that? Another cab? Oh, that's a small cabazon. Undersized cabazon for this one, but wow. Boy, here's my second catch. This is an undersized cabazon, but they have similar kind of that redness on their skin. But look at the inside, look at the mouth. This guy is so blue on the inside. What a beautiful fish. All right, I'm gonna let this guy go. All right, buddy. There you go. All right, I'm gonna just try to cast along the rock here. The water, the visibility is so nice. Shoot, I might go diving today. So let me explain. By this point, I've been fishing for about 30 minutes, and that cabazon was actually my second fish. And I had caught a keeper cabazon 10 minutes prior to that fish. But uh, the GoPro that I was recording with, I accidentally hit format on the GoPro after all the fishing, so I lost all the GoPro footage from the fishing session. And I didn't get that first cabazon with this camera, but I do have a little footage from my phone that I took. And here it is, this was my first catch, 16 inch cabazon. And has that same coloration, slightly less blue in the mouth, but beautiful still. 
Awesome, looks like we're having cabazon as part of our dish. That's pretty cool. I guess last time I had cabazon was uh, right before all the quarantine stuff started happening. So I guess it wasn't too long ago, but that's exciting. That took no time, pretty surprised. <laughs> Usually takes me forever to catch a fish. So let's see, what else should I get? I got fish, check. I'm gonna get other stuff too, cause I want it to be like a full on dish, not just like a grilled fish and that's it and call it that, call that a dish. But uh, different components to the dish, you know, that make it one whole beautiful uh, little, little dish. <laughs> Damn, snagged on the kelp. When I'm snagged, sometimes just let it slack. Just let it slack for uh, maybe a couple different sets of waves. And then, uh, and then I try to just pop it off. And usually it works. I feel like it's coming out, but I'm bringing the kelp out at the same time. Oh yeah, there's the kelp right there. I freaking have it on my line. Oh my gosh. Is this a sign? Is this a sign right now? That kelp should be part of the dish? I just literally caught a kelp on hook and line. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> now I feel like I have to use it, right? But, uh, oh my gosh, it's freaking heavy. Let me just take that off. You know what's been eating it? It's all the sea urchins. It's been eating the bottom of the kelp right where it attaches to the rock. So that's why it was so weak and I was able to pull it out. And it got so thin there. Because it just, you know, the urchins ate through it, literally. Yeah, I mean, this is a bullwhip kelp. Completely legal to harvest bullwhip kelp. It looks like there's a lot more uh, kelp here than when I was here like a year ago. Um, so, which is a good sign. But there's definitely still a lot of sea urchin down there. I can tell with, with, the, with the stipe on this kelp. Yeah. Um, anyways, we can harvest this. But the weird thing is, like, even if it's like this, technically the rules state that you can't take more than 10 pounds. Oh yeah, I just got an idea. All right, cool. Got an idea, I'll tell you later. I'm gonna take this right here. And I'm also gonna take a little bit of the, the stipe as well. Well, I think it was a sign for me to use kelp as part of the dish too. Whenever something like this happens, um, unintentionally, you know, pull out kelp or um, find some fresh ones washed up, I take it and I pickle these and they're so good. You know what, I think I'm gonna dive here. I wanna dive here. It's pretty calm, um, it's shallow and I'm sure there's, and there's fish. So what I actually want to do now is I want to put my rods away and I want to get my free diving gear on and go diving right here and see what it looks like. And I know it'll probably be pretty good. I know there's fish in there, first of all, and I know it's pretty shallow uh, and it's also calm. So I'll most likely be just be grabbing some sea urchin, but who knows, there could be some scallops. Uh, yeah, it's a possibility or crabs even. So yeah, that, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, let's try that. Whew. All right, got my diving gear. I'm gonna just get suited up and just head in there. These ones I usually wear for kayaking too. These are from Venture Wetsuits. I'll leave a link in the description. jump. <laughs> I 
All right, normally I would never do a dive by myself, but since I know that this is shallow here, it's really protected and calm. As you can see around me, it's protected all around. And uh, Jocelyn's just right here. She's gonna be watching me from above the whole time. So I felt pretty confident uh, that, you know, it's really safe. So I'm gonna go ahead, but always have a dive partner. All right, let's do this. These are blue rockfish, and they like hanging out in the middle water column, opposed to the bottom where most rockfish hang out. So next time you're rockfishing, try to target that middle water column too. And what the f this damn jellyfish nearly sh myself. This specific rock was covered with a ton of abalone and abalone season is currently closed so you can't take any of them and it's been closed for the past couple of years and part of it has to do with the amount of sea urchin there are and you're about to see how much sea urchin and we're just gonna take a little freeze frame right here and look at the amount of sea urchin it literally covers every square foot of the ocean floor there um, they compete for food. They all eat kelp. I'm not gonna do it this time But for next time I have a really good plan for these purple urchin. So uh, stay tuned for that I I'm gonna figure out a way to help and uh, to decrease the numbers because look at the amount of purple urchin that I hear And it's these purple urchins that are you know taking over kelp patties and there's a kelp greenling right there That's a nice one, too. That's a keeper definitely um, but Anyways Yeah, this is a crazy how much purple origin there are down there um, but that specific patch was super thick
That's for all my uni lovers. Mm. These big ones, they're actually not as sweet as the small purple ones. The small purple ones actually taste better. You just uh, have to work for them more because they're, they're so small. You gotta eat a bunch, you know. Uh, it's harder to process. So these ones are much bigger, but the smaller ones actually taste better. Look at this guy still moving. Well, the dive was pretty cool. Uh, good amount of fish down there, as I as predicted a bunch of sea urchin down there so got a couple sea urchin to add to the dish now i have the cabazon kelp and sea urchin so that's three things going into the dish i don't know what i'm gonna make yet still uh, i think i'm still gonna try to gather some things look at what we have here got a bunch of blackberries so right now is blackberry season august uh so we're in late august but yeah, a ton of blackberries still uh, all along the coast. You'll see blackberries, uh, especially in Northern California. So uh, I see a lot of these are still red, but there's still some black ones, some ripe ones. So I'll, we'll just take some of the ripe ones and possibly it'll be in our dish. I don't know how yet, but I'll try to incorporate it as well. All right, let me try one. Oh, sweet, yeah. That's nice. The really ripe ones are too sweet. Ah, oh, here's some wild radish too. These guys right here are wild radish. You can tell by the flowers and also these little seed pods on them. And these little seed pods are delicious. They taste just like radish. And yeah, they, you can pickle them and you can just eat them raw like this. Uh, so we'll take some of this too, these little tiny guys. But if they kind of mature, uh, it's not edible anymore. It's too hard and seedy. Oh, nice spot. I think I'm gonna wait to cook the cabazon uh, t for tomorrow because we don't have enough daylight left and I want you guys to be able to see. So we're just gonna do a little camp dinner tonight and yeah, we'll cook it up tomorrow. Got some firewood. Well, we're gonna enjoy this dinner and we'll see you guys in the morning. So I think I'm gonna try to dehydrate a couple of the kelp. Here's a little piece of bullwhip kelp. Mmm, wow, oh wow. This is actually really good. Salty and really tasty, actually. Wow. Um, I'm down for this. Oh, yeah. This is good. It's really salty. This is gonna be perfect. 
Good morning. Well, low tide was at 6 a.m., but I slept in. It's 8 a.m., so missed the low tide, uh, so we won't get to do that. But uh, you know what? I just think I'm just going to go with what I have and uh, cook that up, cook up the cabazon and the kelp. Got the uni, too, and a couple of the foraged ingredients. We'll see what I can make with that, all right? I have sort of a visual in my head, um, so we'll go for it. But first, we'll make breakfast, and then... Right after that, we'll start prepping uh, for lunch with the cabazon. All right. I don't know what it is about camping, but you have to make a breakfast like this. Mm -hmm. You know, like at home, I never make this. Mm -mm. <laughs> Just when we camp. <laughs> I'm going to start with this kelp. So, and what I'm going to do with this kelp is I'm going to make a little, I'm going to weave it. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to weave it and then make it into like a little wrap so I can wrap the whole cabazon and then I'm going to just cook that on the fire. I think that's a pretty good idea. Measure everything out. Since I'm not using any seasoning either, this kelp will help it uh, with the salt because this is very salty so it should help season the fish let's see I think this is good these up these up let's see I've never done this before, but I think it should work. Just like that. And then I just have to do a bunch of those. The kelp is very slippery. So hopefully it doesn't come apart. All right, here's my cabazon. He's uh, slightly blue in there, can you see that? But that meat will turn uh, just pure white once it's cooked. So I'm just gonna lay this guy in here. He's been on ice all night. Uh, I'm just gonna lay him down and I think I'll score it a little bit. Let's see. Just go for it, I guess. It's so slippery, so slimy. I want to keep it tight. There you go. All right, all right. Not bad. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. I have a couple skewers, so I think I'm gonna use that. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that that's uh pretty good. And I think the fish should the fish should steam nicely in here. Well, there you go. Look at this one. That shows you that even though it's a big one, doesn't mean that it's going to have a nice big yield. This one is nearly empty. I mean, you can still eat some of that in there, but this one's half the size and there's much more in there. Nice. All right, now I'm just gonna cover this with the, with the big hot coals here. 
color of the kelp is changing already. I'm also going to get some water boiling. You know what? Let's smoke the uni right on top of there. It's a good idea. Right, I'm going to take this uni. Put that right there. This is the dehydrated kelp. I'm just gonna lay this kelp right on top of the uni here and just uh, kind of have this smoke. There you go. So I'm just slicing this kelp thinly and uh, kind of make like noodles or like a kelp pasta almost uh, just 100% kelp though and hopefully it's not too salty once it's boiled and we'll let that go for a while on the smoke. I think this is gonna turn out pretty cool. So I still have these blackberries and I'm thinking I'm just gonna try to make a sauce out of it for the kelp pasta. I'm just gonna heat it up and crush it. Try to make like a little sauce. Blackberries and kelp might be weird. All right, I think I'm gonna take the uni off. Oh, look at that. Looks pretty. I think that looks good. Let me taste it, see if it's salty. Not salty at all. Almost like it needs salt. Oh. Ooh, it's hot, 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 hot. All right, I got it out. I'm gonna just let it cool down for a minute. Maybe a couple of minutes. Let's see, how's it look on the bottom? Oh, that's pretty good. Ow. Oh, why'd you touch the metal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a test, taste test on a blackberry sauce with kelp. Let's see how that tastes. All right, blackberry sauce. That's actually not bad. It just tastes like blackberry. Like I said earlier, the kelp right here is really bland. Almost no flavor. So that just takes a lot of that blackberry flavor. So, yeah, should I go for it? There's like a little mm. kelpy aftertaste, but yeah, it's not that, it's not bad. Mix that up in there. There we go. Oh wow, 
Oh, it's cooked. It is cooked. It's that. juicy. Yeah, it's, it's super juicy. It's gonna be very rustic plating here. The wild radish seed pods. We got a dish 100% made out of things that we harvested yesterday. We got two uni here. We got the kelp strips with the blackberry sauce and wild radish seed pods and this cabazon that was cooked in kelp. Woohoohoo! This looks pretty cool. It's not the most beautiful thing you've seen, but it's pretty cool. Remember the kelp that I dehydrated yesterday? This is very salty. You see these white, little powdery whiteness? That's all salt. Wait, let me just take a taste first. Tastes good. I could probably use a little salt, so I'm just gonna crush, crush this on. And this is gonna give it nice, nice saltiness. I have one more garnish. This is the wild radish flower. All right guys, here's my dish created with 100% of things that I just harvested yesterday. Woo, and we got beer. Cheers. Cheers. Never tried that um, kelp cooking method. Mm -hmm. That was my first time and it came out pretty good, I think. Oh, look at this. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, it's here. glistening. Mm. Oh. <laughs> mm. my cheek. Juicy. Mm. That little bit of that, the dried kelp, it really does help. It really kicks it up a notch. Nice little saltiness. Mm. Look at that. With a piece of kelp on there too. Mm. Mm. I ate mine with a little bit of radish. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Let's dip in the sauce. You want some sauce, alright? Yeah, let's see what happens. Wild radish is spectacular. It's one of my favorite foraged ingredients. Mm. Tastes just like radish. Nice and crunchy. Nice crunch, yeah. Hey, the fish is juicy. Mm -hmm. It's steamed in that kelp very nicely. Let's try this uh, interesting kelp pasta blackberry <laughs> this may be one of the weirder things that i made a little tart has a little brininess it's, it's um i wouldn't say it's a great combination but it's not bad it's not bad if i would have been if i would have went foraging again this morning then maybe we could have had a little more but no i think this is so cool either way i'm gonna try some of this uni that's been smoked mm. smoked uni is the way to go <laughs> oh yeah it's all melty i wish we had toast again mm. Ooh, yeah smoked uni mm. that's so good but this red urchin it was definitely not as uh, sweet as the purple urchin. So, you know, when I was diving there yesterday and there was so many urchin, right? Just purple urchin. There's a fair amount of red urchin as well. But you know what? From at the time, I wasn't really thinking. So I was just grabbing the biggest one I saw. You know? And then uh, later on, I was like, man, I should just grab a lot more purple urchins because that's the ones, those are the ones we need to eat. So from now on, I think... I, from now on, I think I'm just gonna grab the purple urchins and just leave the red ones alone because the, the purple ones actually taste better. They're sweeter. Uh, even though the red ones may have a bigger yield at times, the purple ones taste much better, trust me. So, harvest the purple ones, that was my bad. Um, yeah, from now on, leave the red ones alone, get the purples. Dang, this cabazon. This cab cabazon's so good. Oh, I love cabazon.
Mooney cabs on. Mmm. Smoky. The uni is so smoky. Mm. And creamy. And the texture of cabazon. Juicy, yet firm. I think I call this a success. I might have to try it again. And yeah, because I honestly didn't know what was going to come out of it. And this is what happened. And you know what? Pretty decent. Maybe it could be a little better. I mean, it's not the most beautiful thing you've seen, but hey, it's pretty good for being, you know, 100% harvested ingredients. It was a good challenge. Yeah, that's a cool little challenge. Only use what you catch for the dish. Yeah, you didn't even use salt. Not even <laughs> salt, but I got that salt from the kelp, the dehydrated kelp, and it's really salty, so works out perfectly. Check out the cheek meat here. Look at the cheek meat. There's a good amount of it. Look, look, look. Look at that. It's a full bite. <laughs> well, guys, that was a fun little challenge there. Um, if you guys like this video, like this kind of content, you think I should do a little more of this, make sure to comment down below and uh, like, hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. And yeah, all we do here is enjoy the outdoors and enjoy good food. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Peace out. <laughs>